Hello gorgeous, I'm the fairy voice mother and welcome to my shower. <laughs> yes, really. If I ate a sugar cube every time I heard someone say, well, I can carry a chin in the shower, but that's about it. I would need significant dental work. I had heard this so many times to the point where I just had to look into it. Some people won't even sing unless it's within the confines of the shower because they believe that it's the only place in which they can sing. Don't make me it's a big deal. As someone who so actively promotes the joys of singing and how everyone should sing and that's kind of my thing, you know, to think that there are some people that can only sing in the shower, it's starting to get personal. So do we all sound better in the shower? I don't want to fall asleep. Or is this some kind of elaborate ruse? A mystical, cruel joke, playfulness, by showers across the across land. The land. Well, in classic fairy voice mother style, I have come up with five theories as to why you might indeed sound better in the shower. Theory number one. Your posture is probably better. When we're in the shower, we're generally going to stand quite tall and broad with a firm footing to make sure we don't slip. And if you're someone that does struggle a little bit with posture, you might find that your posture in the shower is actually better, in which case your voice is going to sound better. Our ribs tend to be a little bit more open as well because we're moving in like this, get the water on our back, and then wear our chest out, get water on the um, chest. And that flexibility in the ribs is supporting your voice more than you know. Take me up. Theory number two. If you've ever sang in a recording studio, or even if you've um, recorded your voice on an app that you can add effects on, you will have seen reverb. When you're in a normal room with things like soft furnishings and just stuff everywhere, squishy stuff, your singing voice will be absorbed by all of the things in the room. But when you're in the shower, because the most obvious choice for showers or bathrooms is things like tiles and glass and ceramics, sinks and stuff. Unless of course you have like carpeted walls in your bathroom, which although that's very, very impractical, I would admire the originality. We have these hard surfaces in our bathroom so that things such as steam and water can kind of just roll off of them without being gross and moldy. Just the way that water and steam isn't absorbed by anything in your bathroom, neither is your singing voice. That's why we get that nice reverberation echo effect. In this room, I get to hear more of my voice. So when I sing out, the reverberations come back round into my ears. You get this lovely echoey chamber of reverb goodness. If you have a very big empty bathroom with no towels in it, nothing, very big open hard space, you're going to get a bigger echo because your voice has less things to be absorbed by. But if you have a slightly smaller shower room, it will be a slightly reduced echo, but still considerably more than if you were to sing in a cushy room. Here's a little comparison for you. Oh, yeah. Number three. The steam. Now it's no secret that steam is excellent for your voice. So your vocal cords consist of three main layers. You've got the epithelium at the edge, the lamina propria, which is the middle one, and then the core, the vocalis muscle. So steam actually penetrates those layers of the vocal cords and kind of plumps them up and makes them, dare I say it, moist. When you are singing in the shower, you're unlikely to experience a dry voice. And dry voices lead to cracks and kind of distortion and, and a little bit of strain sometimes. If that's something that you suffer with when you're not singing in the shower, it's perhaps because the steam has helped hydrate your voice. Well, that settles it then. I guess it's healthier to sing in the shower, so I'm just going to do that. No, you can bring the shower to you. This, my friends, is a vocal steamer. You put very hot water in it, the steam comes out the tube, and you breathe it in. You have all of the benefits of a steamy shower right here. If you don't have one of these, I don't endorse them or anything, you don't have to buy one. You can recreate that steamy effect in other ways as well, like filling a bowl with hot water and putting a towel over your head and breathing it in. Yeah, steam is good for you. Steam is your friend. Steam will save you. But it doesn't have to come from a shower. Theory number four you're being constructively distracted. 
Let me explain that. There's a little rascal in your body called the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve carries messages in your body from tip to toe, but specifically is very much intertwined with your voice. The vagus nerve is part of your parasympathetic nervous system. This is the system put in place by your divine creator so that when you touch something hot, your hand pulls away from it. It's our fight or flight response. Because the vagus nerve is so connected in with your voice, if you are experiencing some kind of fear, even though it's not grave fear, like you're about to be burnt or something, it's the, the kind of fear like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna hit that note, or I don't know if this is gonna sound very good, or oh, I just don't think I can do it. Your vagus nerve will get involved and constrict your voice and make it so that the note does not come out indeed. So if you're someone that experiences nervousness when singing and fear to hit notes and that kind of thing, the vagus nerve is the culprit, pretty much. Now there are ways, as singers and humans in general, that we can tone our vagus nerve to not be so responsive and reactive when we don't need it to be. Training our subconscious mind. To help tone this vagus nerve, one of the techniques I teach all the time is to ground yourself. So feeling your feet connected to the floor, or maybe feeling yourself stand against a wall, or holding something, just something tangible so you feel like you're safe. Positive distractions. So the shower is full of positive distractions. Obviously the reverb that we spoke about earlier coming in to make your voice sound better, the feel of the water on your skin, the sound of the water hitting the floor of the shower, the tray, I guess. And one would like to assume cleaning would be a distraction that happens in the shower. Now because your body is experiencing all this sensory loveliness, you're less likely to be concerned about what's coming out of your mouth if you're singing. Effectively, your singing voice is gonna come out unscathed, nice and open, you feel good, your steam's coming in, you're hearing the reverb, you've got all kinds of things going on, so you're just gonna sing and you're less likely to be worried about the sound it makes. And because you're less worried about the sound you're making, it's gonna sound better. And last, but by no means least, theory number five. There are no consequences, which means you're fearless. Now, honestly, this is kind of the same thing as number four. There's no one watching you, unless of course there is, and you know about them. You can lock the door so you don't have to worry about being startled and throwing you off your game. Don't look at me. When you're in the shower, it is a VIP admit one concert. So there's no pressure, nothing can go wrong. The reason that this fearlessness has such a positive effect is because of all the things I explained in theory four. So it's all part of the same thing. So fairy voice mother, I hear you cry. What do we do about this? Well, I do love a solution. Next time you're in your shower stadium putting on the concert of your life, try and take what I call a little mental snapshot. I've been doing this randomly since I was a kid, it's really weird. When I have like a really nice thing that's happening, like I'm at a really fun event or I'm really comfortable, I've always closed my eyes and took a mental kind of snapshot of my five senses and how I'm experiencing that in that moment. So thinking about what you can smell, what you can taste, what you can hear, what you can touch, and what you can see. Try and make note of what's stimulating those five senses when you're in the shower, so that you can take that into a performance anywhere. So when you're singing in a different room, or in front of people, or filming a video or something like that, you can rely on the feeling of steam coming through your lips, the feeling of the water hitting you. You can bring those sensations with you anywhere, forever, so long as you've taken the time when you're in the shower to make a perfect mental picture of it so it's a really clear, vivid memory. I hope my five theories on shower singing has shed some light on your life. Hopefully it has somewhat illuminated this great modern mystery. If you liked this video, then please like it and subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching, have a beautiful day, and I love you. Goodbye.